from the band Kansas on their newly released album. In a typical year, the band would take that album on tour, but the coronavirus crisis has stalled live entertainment across the country, leading to millions of job losses behind the scenes. The live events industry contributes $300 billion to the U.S. economy every year, and since March, revenue has dropped to about zero. That is impacting everybody, from bands to managers, venues, and the lighting engineers. And joining us right now is Phil Ehart. He is the drummer and manager for the band Kansas. And Michael Strickland, who's the chair and founder of lighting company Bandit Lights. Gentlemen, it, uh, welcome to both of you. Phil, it is great to see you again. Love having you here. And, and Michael, uh, the first time that we've seen you, we want to welcome you. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Let's good to be talk here. a little thank bit, you. Michael, about what's happening. Great. Let's talk about what's happening to this overall industry, because I think the live events business is $300 billion to the economy. Live entertainment is $38 billion, and there's something like 12 million people who have jobs behind the scenes there, and that's probably something a lot of people don't really realize, Michael. What, what's happening behind the scenes right now? What, what's happened to those people who would be there to set up the concerts and take things down? Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you for having us on here today. Entertainment, arts, and, and culture as a whole is $877 billion with 10 to 12 million people employed. Uh, there are three facts about what's going on. First and foremost, uh, no one knows our industry exists. No one. Uh, second, the people that do know that our industry exists do believe that because you're, you're rolling stones and your U2s are extraordinarily wealthy, that everyone within the space is extraordinarily wealthy. And that's simply not the fact. Uh, most of us in the industry work for the artist and sort of everyone below the artist level is, is struggling right now. And the third fact is, and I, I want to thank CNBC for having us on here, this is the first national coverage this has gotten that the live event industry as a whole went to zero income on March 13th and will be at zero income until March of next year. Unlike restaurants and gymnasiums and hair salons, we have no income and, and no chance of income. And that fact is very simple, Rebecca because we can't have events, because we can't have 10,000 people together at the same place at the same time. So un unlike some of the other struggling businesses, we sit in a moment where we can do absolutely nothing. And, and the key point here is we're at half time. It's been five months since the virus hit. It will be another five months until we can get open, if we can get open then. So you've got 10 million people that, that literally are making no income. Yeah. Phil, these are people that you know well, have known for years, and have relied on for years. What do you see uh, around you? Well, it's, uh, speaking for all my peers, it's, uh, we're all sitting at home. I mean, we were basically, uh, with a new album, heading out in March, heading out to the West Coast, and we got a call from our, our agent and said, guys, head home. California's closing up, you know, uh, Oregon. Uh, Las Vegas, everything started to shut down, and uh, so we've all headed home. Everybody's sitting at home with no income. So it's the kind of thing that uh, uh, is very startling at first, and then you start to realize, you know, uh, all our support staff, our lighting, our trucking, our staging, everything is uh, all at home. So it's it starts to take its effect not seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not like, well, because speaking for Kansas, we're already moving our dates from 2020 into 2021. And just the other day, we started to move our dates into 2022. So it's, it's not looking any better. And as Michael said, there's zero income. It's not like we can go over and, and play out in the park somewhere on the back of a flat bed bad truck we're stranded we're done so uh so yeah it's it's uh <laughs> kind of wakes you up that's for sure makes you pay attention phil do you have concerns about whether the industry can survive and whether there will still be all those people left those uh, places to play after we come out the other side of this well, uh, sure. I mean, I like to stay positive. I mean, it's the kind of thing you, you want to. You want you want to believe that uh, uh, that someday we'll come out of this and there'll be concerts again. That there'll be sports. There'll be arts and you know things at theaters, ballet and stuff. All all of the things involved in 
in arts and, and where there are anything where crowds can go. Yeah, it's, uh, but uh, as far as the things that look real, the, 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 some of the things Mike will, Mike will be talking about are the venues. The venues, if they don't, if the venues, think about your favorite theaters, your favorite per performing arts centers, the, uh, the, the uh, outdoor amphitheaters that you go, if they don't have concerts for a year or two, they're not going to survive. They're going to shut down. And a lot of them, a lot of those theaters in downtown cities around the U.S. are prime real estate. And those theaters will be bought and probably torn down. And when we all come out of this again and go back to our favorite, you know, theaters downtown, they won't be there. So it's something that, uh, it, you know, a lot of people sitting at home, well, how is it going to affect me? Well, just think about where you go to see things and to uh, listen to music. And, you know, so, yeah, it's uh, pretty catastrophic. And I think it's only going to get worse. Michael, to that point, you have spoken with some members of Congress about this. Where, where do things stand in terms of potential relief for the industry? And thank you, Rebecca. On March 14th, I reached out to my two senators, Lamar Alexander and Marsha Blackburn, and that sort of began a process whereby I expanded my service, service my circle, and uh, spoke to them and their staff, and then ended up talking to other senators, and I've been in contact quite a bit with uh, Senator Young and Senator Bennett, who have uh, written what, what we call and what is known as the Restart Act. Uh, and we've sort of been chasing revenue. What the, what the Congress did for us, you know, back in April with the PPP was phenomenal. And, and that was sort of a bridge loan when we all thought this would be over in 30 to 60 days. But then we've moved beyond that. And everyone's you know, out of money within, within the small business community, within those businesses that have been shut down. So now we're looking at this next relief package that they're trying to craft and when you look across the landscape the restart act is the only act that will take care of small business in a way that works for most small business now bear in mind we're talking within our channel about venues and managers and agents and booking agents and sound people and light people and bus people and catering people and pyro people so there's you know there's 10 million people just sitting but i spend all day every day communicating with a set of senators and Congress people and their staffs helping to guide them into what small business needs generally, but uh, specifically what the live event industry needs to make sure that, that we can get through to January. And uh, if we don't, as Phil said, not only will venues cease to exist, but we're already losing companies. And, and more importantly, we're losing people uh, out of out of this market sector going into other market sectors which is why it's so important that the enhanced unemployment uh, be extended and, and right now it's sort of in a log jam and we're hoping in the next two weeks that congress can come to terms on the next relief bill and get the restart language inserted into the bill and get the unextended employment sorted out uh, hopefully at a 600 dollar per week level uh, John, I want to thank you both for being with us and, and shedding some light on this. I, I don't think people realize how many people are employed in this industry and how much uh, strain they're under at this point. And, and to that point, uh, the, the initiative on September 1st next week is going to be taking place. It's red alert. I know there are going to be locations around the country that are lit up red as an effort to try and shed more light on this. But we, we thank you both for your time today. Uh, Michael, nice to have you with us. And, and Phil, thank you for being with us and congratulations on the new album. Thank you very much, Becky.